guys, Stephanie here with Pure Canine Training. So I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the types of prong collars I use, why I use prong collars, why they are some of the safest collars you can use, and sizing and fitting. So, I understand. It looks like a medieval torture device, but it's actually one of the safest collars you can use. Function over fashion. When you have your dog on a flat collar and they're pulling on a walk, you hear that choking noise, right? The reason is you're putting all this uneven pressure on the trachea. Over time, it's actually going to damage the throat. And when you have a harness and your dog is pulling, this is the strongest part of your dog's body. Think weight pulling dogs, sled dogs, you're gonna put a harness on them and they're gonna go and pull because harnesses encourage pulling. Now, when you put a prong collar on, if you're doing, if you use it properly, you're going to introduce it first and help a dog understand something called pressure release, which is what's unique about the prong collar. And this is how your dog is able to understand communication through the prong collar and make decisions. So instead of you fighting, so your dog's pulling the other way on a walk and you're like, knock it, knock it off. And they're choking themselves out on the flat collar or you know, you've know you got a battle of wheels going on with the uh, harness. That's different here because not only are they learning what pressure release means, but they're also learning that they are under, they are in control of how to turn it off. So it actually makes for a much more pleasant walk, but also your dog has a feeling of they're in control of it and it's not a fight. They get to make decisions. So pressure release is basically, I'm pulling away from you and there's pressure and it's even all the way around. And that's what's different between a prong collar and a flat collar. Remember, a flat collar is going to put uneven pressure on the trachea, damaging the throat. This is putting even pressure all the way around. It also sits differently. It sits up here high. So it's not even on, it shouldn't be if it's fitted properly. It shouldn't even be down here on the trachea to begin with. So this gives you more control of the neck anyway. But, you know, your dog's pulling, you're like, that's not that comfortable. But oh, if I come towards you, that pressure just turns off. Oh, that's cool. That's not comfortable. Oh, okay. No, I don't like, okay. So they learn that they have complete control of how to turn it off and you're not fighting them. You're not going, stop it. It's just, I'm here, you go there. Oh, oh, I am the one that, puts it on or takes it off and I know how to turn it off now. So now it's all communication, right? And then you can just go this way. Oh, okay. We're going this way. It doesn't take much. It's all communication. Your dog under, if your dog understands the tool, how pressure release works, then it makes it very easy for you to just give a little bit of a communication through the collar and your dog go, okay, got it. And you're not really fighting with your dog anymore. The key is if your dog understands it, you have to give your dog a proper introduction and make sure your dog understands what pressure release is and what that means. So, one of the safest collars you can use because for one, you are putting even pressure all the way around the throat. You have control, you have the most control over the neck, but also your dog is under the impression and they do have the most control over where they go. So how do I turn off the pressure? So it's easy to communicate with this. You're not fighting with your dog. So uh, that is why I prefer prong collars over most any other collar. And that's why they are some of the safest. You're going to fit this to the neck, which is another reason why it's safe because it really can't get any smaller than you make it. This is a, a dead ring. 
or an o-ring and whatever size you adjust it to so let's say this fits my neck you really can't choke your dog on this it won't get any smaller than you make it okay so sizing the prong collars uh, for the larger dogs I typically use a Herm Springer. Herm Springer are stainless steel, made in Germany. They do have some different materials, but typically stainless steel. Uh, they do have larger sizes. They have a large, they have an extra large. I don't use those. I only use a medium and a small. Medium is a 3.0. Uh, for me, that is large enough. I've used these on, you know, uh, St. Bernard's and you know your huge breeds your giant breeds and that's good enough I've used these on um, Great Danes you don't really need in my opinion anything larger than this so for me I use a medium which is a 3.0 millimeter it's Herm, Herm Springer typically I will use these this for dogs that are over 50 pounds 50 ish and that's not a hard and fast rule. That's just, in general, depending on the dog, um, I may use it on dogs much bigger or even a little bit smaller, just depending on the dog and the intensity of the dog, the size of the dog's neck, it just depends. And then the small is a 2.25 millimeter, also a Herm Springer. And this one I typically use for dogs up to 50 pounds. Again, not a hard and fast rule, just in general. So, Herm Springer you can find usually on Amazon. Sometimes you can find it on, you, sometimes you can find them in your uh, local private pet stores. And then they also have a website, hermspringer.com I think. And then for your really tiny dogs, you have a micro prong. This is for your dogs under 20 pounds, under 10 pounds, under five pounds. So there's a company called Kimberlin Collars. And this company is based in Washington. All of their, collar, all of their prongs are made by hand. And they actually use some Herm Springer parts for some of their prongs. Um, so, you know, it's a good quality, good quality uh, collars. But you can see how tiny their prongs are. In, in comparison, this is the small for the Herm Springer and this is the micro prong. So they actually have a few different micro prongs. They have one specifically for dogs under like five or six pounds. So your teacups. Uh, you know your toy dogs your teeth your teacups but they also have uh, one this is the dura this is the one for dogs up to 20 pounds or maybe a little over and you can add again you can add prongs so you know you may have a dog that's got a wider neck than this but is 15 pounds you know that's you know or 18 pounds whatever it still works so you can add and take away prongs again same and uh, they also, the thing that's nice about this, it works the same as the others, but of course it's small and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people still struggle even with the larger ones to pinch the prongs and take them in and out. So what they have that's nice is they have an option on their website for some of their prongs where they have a clip and they'll clip it into their, into their uh, collar. So that way you don't have to pinch the prongs to take them in and out. You can just clip it on and then be done with it. So if you have a smaller dog, they have a lot of great options on their website. I will link Kimberlin Collar's website below so you can check them out for yourself and see you know, what works for you. All right, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. Uh, you can also private message me if you have any inquiries.